Uh, large constellations of uh, small satellites will actually allow people much more timely in, uh, data. So they will actually allow us to get a lot more data from Earth observation, uh, from uh, IoT, so Internet of Things. So we'll be able to monitor uh, objects on Earth much, much better. We'll be able to actually monitor our crops, our forests, everything much, much more in real time than we can do now. For the general public, then accessing space will change by space becoming not something which is used by the few, but becoming something that's used by the many. Um, and what that will mean is that it will be considered more like shipping or any other kind of commodity item. If you look at people like, um, like OneWeb, who are next door, they're building a constellation of many hundreds of satellites, and that will provide global broadband throughout the whole world. And there's no other way of doing that. If you want to receive broadband anywhere in the world, you have to do it from space. So you need a large constellation to provide all of the capacity. Satellites have this unique property of actually being able to capture data and information and transmit it globally. And uh, that's definitely one of the things that is most needed uh, these days. Whether you look at the climate crisis or other issues that require global understanding, that data is, is, is going to be very, very important. We're looking at ubiquitous connectivity, being able to connect everybody all across the globe so that you'll have a better data service for the people that currently do have access, but also will be able to reach those places in the world where there isn't existing communications infrastructure. So it's going to be about staying in touch with everybody everywhere. The biggest technical challenges in deploying large constellations are really related to um, being able to mass produce a reliable satellite at a very low cost. Because you can imagine a constellation consisting of hundreds or thousands of satellites. To keep the total system cost reasonable, you have to have a very low cost per unit. In a lot of respects, uh, these constellations will be complementary. So you've got already uh, assets up in geostationary orbit that are sitting over a fixed point on the globe. You've now got a whole set of satellites sitting much lower, but also providing that same kind of continuous coverage. So it's actually adding an extra layer of capability. The biggest technical challenges for these constellations is really linking up between them and making sure that you get a seamless signal as you do with your mobile phone because they're moving so fast, they're in the low Earth orbit. I see the future space infrastructure being very much a network of different satellites working together. What we might see is satellites providing initial tips for a larger spacecraft to capture imagery, for example. And so it will become very much a marketplace for different satellite services exchanging between each other. The easiest application is uh, telecommunication related, meaning IoT, M2M. The harder thing is, of course, uh, Earth observation, because you know, we, still we have some physical limitations of the optical systems. I mean, the bigger the lenses, the bigger the telescope, the angle of the view and, of course, resolution. I think the next step will be uh, in the Earth observation side of things and, and getting uh, readily imagery available you know, to your phone or other places right in front of you will, will mean people can use that imagery in ways that never before was possible. We need to be thinking about how do we communicate better with those end users so that we are building the right solutions upstream to deliver the right value downstream.